name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, my name is Father James Platania. I was doing doctoral studies in Rome for a number of years, and I returned to the United States just a week ago. I'll be teaching sacred scripture at Immaculate Conception Seminary at St. Paul University. And I was invited to celebrate this Mass with all of you. This is my first time in this parish and in this church. And I'm very impressed by the beauty of it and by the welcome I received from the parish staff. So therefore, it is my joy to be with you to celebrate this Mass as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. As we begin this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous evil. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my you brothers and sisters, sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra ex hominibus, ora voluntatis, laudamus benedicibus
For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exalt, exalt with her, all you who were mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Christ tells us that the kingdom of God is at hand, and that is cause for rejoicing. In our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, in the 66th chapter, towards the end of that great prophetic book, the prophet speaks about exalting over Jerusalem. He was hoping, this prophet was hoping for a rebuilt Jerusalem after exile, after suffering, that they could return from Babylon to Jerusalem and there they finally would be comforted again after their period in exile. And the imagery is rich. The comfort that they will find in Jerusalem, says the prophet, is the same comfort that a child has as it is being held in the arms of its mother as it nurses from her and receives his or her life from the mother. So Jerusalem will be like a river also and prosperity will flow like the water. This image of being held like a child should remind us of our own childhood Firstly, so many times our first memories are of our mothers, and it is our mothers who introduce us into the world, of course, providing us comfort even from the moment of our conception. And because of this, we rejoice in life from conception until natural death and we rejoice in all legislation that protects life, especially the most vulnerable in the womb. Because even the prophet saw it an apt metaphor to describe God's love for us, the love of a mother who gives life to her child. Yet Christ tells us that the kingdom of God is at hand, and we know he didn't establish that kingdom in, an, in a way that he built a new city, for example. Rather, he gives his disciples, as recounted from the Gospel of Luke, an instruction manual of how to evangelize. As I begin now to prepare for my courses at Seton Hall, and I think, how am I going to instruct my students in what I want them to learn? First and foremost, I have to develop my plan, my syllabus. And then usually in the first lecture, I kind of give an overview of where my course is going to go. And I always ask my students what their expectations are. So we're clear from the beginning on what they're going to gain in, in my course. And I think that's what Christ is doing to the 72 as he sends them out to evangelize. And his words are so true when he says that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. But you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are the laborers. And he sends each and every one of us out into this world to proclaim his love and mercy. But when we do that, we may meet resistance. We may meet people who are not willing to hear what we have to say. But I also have good news is that so many are. Just yesterday, I celebrated a wedding at Christ the King Church in New Vernon, New Jersey, of a friend of mine named Philip who was marrying a lady from French-speaking Canada, from Quebec. Now, French-speaking Canada was traditionally very Catholic, but through the years we've seen a decrease in the practice of the faith. Nevertheless, at this mass of holy matrimony, there were about 40 of her friends who had traveled from Montreal 
to be there. And I saw that as such a great opportunity to try to reopen that door of faith to our brothers and sisters who are baptized. I did it in the best way I knew how, with a holy liturgy. I tried to preach to the best of my ability in a way that was applicable to the lives of the couple and also relatable to so many of these young French Canadians who, were now, who now found their, themselves in New Jersey. And many of them, in fact, after in the reception, came up to me and we had spiritual conversations based on that. Now, they'll be going back to Canada. I don't know what will happen there. But I know I did my part. But there was one conversation I had which didn't go as smoothly. And I found like one of these, uh, one of the men who was attending, he was asking me questions, but he was also trying to trick me. He was trying to take advantage of the trust I had given him because of my relationship with the couple. But then in the end, I saw he was trying to trap me almost. And I thought, wow. So even today, there are still people who are trying to trip us up. So we must re remain wise in our dealings with the world. And that's why Christ says, and sometimes you're going to go into towns and they will not receive you. You're going to say peace to this household and some people are not going to receive your peace. It will return to you. And Jesus is preparing us for this because I think as disciples in our modern world, we don't want to be rejected. We don't want the message of, of faith to be rejected. And when it is, we may get a little confused internally. But Christ tells us that, in fact, we are going to be sent out like lambs among wolves. And if he's saying this in a religious nation of Israel, even more so, I say it to you. Nevertheless, he is sending us, and you are his chosen laborers, and so am I. What's interesting about this gospel from Luke, amongst other things, is that it skips the actions of the disciples in the world after this instruction on the first day of class when they read the syllabus, we don't get anything that happens. We get the final exam. And what was the final exam when they come back and report to the teacher, to their rabbi and master Jesus? Even the demons, they say, are subject to us because of your name. And Christ says, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Brothers and sisters, if we have faith like the 72 disciples, I believe that even demons will be subject to us because of the name of Christ, certainly not because of any of our own merit. Because Christ has given us this power. And the more we believe that and speak like we mean it and allow our hearts to be convicted, we're going to do the more great work we'll do for Christ and the more miraculous things we will see. Because I've seen miracles, and maybe you have too. But miracles are produced by God through faith and not through self-doubt, through confidence and not through fear in the name of Christ, through trust in the Father who created all things and has power even over evil spirits. So many people are interested in the ministry of exorcism, aren't they? And they want to know about that. But I want to know about how much and how great the works will be that you could accomplish in Christ's name when you truly believe in Him. Because Christ is here in the Eucharist and in the community and in the scriptures, and that should give us strength and courage to confront any challenge, to go out like lambs among wolves, because we know that Christ is the Lamb of God, and it's through his lamb-like sacrifice that we have been set free, and we are truly free 
as sons and daughters of God. And that's the message that we can proclaim to everyone, whether they receive it or not. Christ is King, and He is with us. Amen. believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, we came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not go. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the Father. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Friends, today's Mass is offered for John da Silva. Let us offer our prayers to the Father. Let us pray for the Church throughout the whole world, that the Church may be an instrument of Christ's teaching. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who enact laws, that they may be in accord with God's divine law. Pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of our brothers and sisters who evangelize in missionary lands or here at home, that they may be confident in proclaiming Christ's name. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the dead. May speak of the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you receive prayers which we make through Christ the Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 139.
Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This in memory of me. second coming 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the occasion of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you would to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Luke, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered abroad. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we pray to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth the Mass is ended. <laughs>